I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files and I appreciate you joining us. We're still in Boise in this beautiful country and meeting some of the most wonderful people and their stories. I hope you've enjoyed them. And today we have Sean Dial who's been willing to come and share his story and I think you're going to find this kind of interesting because um, Sean just has a great story and a great, great attitude and uh, convert to the church. So tell us a little bit, where were you born? Uh, Orange County, California. And brothers and sisters? <clears throat> One older brother, yep. One older brother, mm -hmm. okay. A lot older or were you good friends? Uh, probably just, uh, I, think, I think just a year and a half. <laughs> were you typical siblings? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Loved and hated each other, but yeah. praise God we love each other now. Oh, good for that. Mm -hmm. And your mom and dad, are they, uh, uh, they, they weren't Mormon? No. No, okay. Uh, my father was, but he, uh, oh. he left the church when he was 14 uh, okay. due to a falling out with his bishop. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so your mom and dad, were, what were they, what did they raise you as? Was there anything in the... In, Christianity? Yes, they, they raised me as, uh, I guess, what the Mormon would call a uh, Bible Christian, a Bible-only Christian, okay. uh, an Orthodox Christian. I've heard other uh, people <laughs> call it that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah we were, um, my brother and I, we were raised in uh, Calvary Chapel. Uh, They're in California. Yeah, oh. uh, big surprise That's for anyone who's started. familiar. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, big surprise for anyone who's from Southern California, you know, yeah. um, one of the first things they conclude if you were raised in Christianity was Calvary Chapel. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. And uh, um, my dad actually was a convert to, um, again, Orthodox Christianity, okay. uh, Bible only Christianity, if you will, uh, after the Mormon fallout, um, if you will. I don't know if that's proper English, but uh, yeah. <laughs> You're using it, we'll, that's fine. <laughs> exactly, we'll go with it. Um, he, uh, total agnostic, you know, that was the only God he ever knew. For how long? I don't really he recall. Uh, he married my mother when he was 33. He left at the age of 14, uh, the Mormon church. So yeah, during that time he was wavering or, or uh, not Yeah, he didn't really, ju yeah, he, he really didn't um, know what to believe. And after yeah. Vietnam, he pretty much didn't care mm. is, the, uh, is the information that I've gathered from my mother. Never talked about Vietnam. I would ask him questions mm. and uh, uh, his mood would change rather quickly. That's typical, I guess. But your mom was a good Christian, and so he followed along with her. And was he able to come to Christ then? And yeah, that's actually a great story. He, um, in fact, I'm reading the book that um, led my father to the Lord. Um, my mom was a uh, true blue uh, <laughs> Christian. Huh? Yeah, unmovable Christian. They worked together, my mom and um, my dad, and. Uh, they started dating. He asked her out, um, and uh, he, again, didn't really have his mind made up about God, didn't really know when that was going to happen, and uh, he uh, expressed that lack of interest to my mother. In fact, it was on their first date <laughs> that they... Uh, he was honest, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about on it. Well, maybe so, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they went to an art museum was one of the things that they did, and, okay. and uh, there was a beautiful painting of Christ on the cross, and I think, my, I think it was my stepdad that was kind of like, oh, whatever. <laughs> and my mom, uh, I think that was, I th I'm pretty sure that was the moment where she was like, well, I'm, I, I am a Christian. And uh, I, th I think his reaction was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, what did I get myself into? Exactly. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, they were about to break up over the issue because my mom didn't want to marry a non-Christian, you mm. know, good for her. Yeah. And uh, she asked my father, just ask God to reveal himself to you. And I'm sure the first thing that went through his head was, oh, geez, this sounds like what I was raised in, you know, pray and God will tell you by yeah. your gooey feelings and whatnot. And <laughs> um, he was in his living room and he actually just did what my mom asked, got on his knees and just simply said, okay, God, if you're really real, I would like to know. And uh, nothing happened. He was expecting the earth to move or, yeah. you know, uh, I guess a Joseph Smith moment. God the Father show up right. and is, you know, you are real. That's what he expected, I guess, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And he's like, well, I guess you're not up to the challenge tonight, God. I, I'll be going to bed now. And the next day he was actually uh, woken up to uh, um, his, my mom knocking on his door with a, the book I'm actually reading right now. It's called Evidence of Demands of Verdict by uh, Josh McDowell. Josh McDowell. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he just tore that apart. I mean, three months, um, if I remember correctly, just three months of nonstop. Reading and studying that book. And yes, asking question after question after question. Good and for uh, him. Yeah, and he became a Christian. He just could not argue <laughs> with the uh, indisputable facts. That's a that great he, case. Yeah. yeah, he tested all of it. Yeah. So he became a Christian. And, Good um, for him. Yeah, and then uh, my brother and I. So that's uh, how you were raised then in Calvary yep, Chapel? Or? Calvary Chapel. So I guess it's fair to ask, we always ask the Mormons, uh, did you have a, what did you think of Jesus at this point in your life? Well, as embarrassing as this is to admit, um, I, I, I really couldn't get my mind around anything you couldn't see and touch. You okay. know, um, pretty much my, my attitude was, uh, for, for Christianity, um, my childhood faith, it could be real. I suppose, um, more of a family tradition than anything else. Interesting to hear that because we, of course, assess that to Mormon young people always. And yeah. so it's true even, I mean, that's just human nature maybe then, huh? Yeah, and, and, and basically, um, I, I, I don't know if this is just my father in me who you know, had to read you know, the book that thick before he could make up his mind about yeah. is, there even, is there even a God yeah. and uh, who is this God if he's real. Um, my whole thing was, I, because I can't see God, because I can't touch God, smell God, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And so I, I, I'm not really comfortable with living as if I do. Yeah. And so I would go to church and read my Bible uh, never on my own. I would only read my Bible when my parents were expecting that of me. But I would go to youth group. Honest and, admission there. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, to me, the faith of Christianity was pretty much, uh, it's, it's what the family does. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's, it's kind of just the, well, the routine. And I think, I guess, to be honest and fair, um, this happens. I mean, God works in different ways with different people. And uh, we have to be, I mean, as, you're, as a youth, you kind of feel compelled, I guess, to follow mom and dad. And yeah, yeah. anyway, so you, eventually get out of the house, I guess, and, and finish <clears throat> high school. What happens during your early 20s? Well, it was actually 17, uh, 16 when my father passed away. Oh. Uh, died of heart failure. And um, at seven... No, I'm sorry. Was this your stepfather then? As you, you said, mentioned the word stepfather. Is that this was your real father? Uh, yes, my real father passed away. At seven, when you were 17? Uh, 16. 16, yeah. Okay. And it was at 17, I uh, actually dropped out of school. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, made a very long, um, not sure quite how to, uh, how, how, um, from then on out, started a very long history of very bad decisions. Okay. I think that's a fair way to say it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, sure. And that lasted for a while until you, what, were 28? 28, yeah. Um, and then... I was, what happened? I was just in a very desperate place in my life. Um, I had um, been to rehab um, for, as a result as, of some of these bad decisions. I was um, living with a group of very not good people, <laughs> <laughs> not good uh, to be influenced by. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I had nowhere to go. And um, I was working graveyard at um, the Winco over here in uh, Nampa. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I think it was like two thirty in the morning. I'm 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 moving this buffer across the floor, cleaning the floor, 
and I just don't know what to do, and I'm swimming in anxiety. And uh, immediately, a uh, pencil-drawn Mormon temple pops up in my head. And it, it looked like just it... Just out of the blue? I mean, you hadn't been drawing one. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, it was actually um, something I remembered from watching an anti-Mormon uh, video at Calvary Chapel. Oh. Uh, that picture popped in my head. From I, years earlier. Yeah, years earlier when I was a teenager. And um, I remember thinking, no way, that can't be the answer. Uh, I know better. I was raised in Calvary Chapel. Did you know it was a Mormon temple then when you first saw it? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a video put together by um, Chuck Smith and uh, Carol Matriciana. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was part of a long series called The Pagan Invasion. They actually had a couple of videos on Mormonism, and so mm -hmm. that's why I dismissed it right away, because I was like, no, I know better, I've seen. Um, but why would that pop in, of all, of all things? Well, uh, they take very good care of their own. Yeah. The Mormons, they take very good care of their own, and it's not like I wanted a handout. I, I was willing to work hard and yeah. um, take care of myself. It's just uh, the people I was living with um, had caused me to uh, doubt my well-being. Um, in that lifestyle. Yeah, right? they, they were taking advantage of me, and I, yeah. I, I didn't really have a lot of say of what yeah. I did with my finances, okay. and uh, I didn't have anywhere to go, and so it's not like I could just up and leave, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, unfortunately, um, this isn't God's fault, but unfortunately, you know, the, the Christian church, the Orthodox Christian church, they were never really there for me. Um, you the know, ones that you were associating with, at least, huh? Yeah, there was a time in my life where I was living in my car, and mm -hmm. uh, instead of um, instead of you know finding out what they could do for me, they were pretty much like, "Well, tough break, buddy. We'll we'll pray for you." Catch you later. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had just heard from word of mouth that wow, these these Mormon folks, they really take care of their own. And again, I was not looking for a handout. And this I, is in Nampa. This is in Nampa. So then, what happened? I um, kept ignoring it, go away, go away, I'm not reading the Book of Mormon, I'm not joining the Mormon church, I know better, until finally I just uh, approached a coworker of mine who I knew was a... a LDS. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know, it, I would really like to know more about your faith. Um, I've only heard one side of the story. I would like to hear the Mormon... Boy, I'll bet he was thrilled. He was, in fact, just that's the... like golden convert <laughs> stuff, or golden contacts, yeah. It, it was, he was doing backflips. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. His, uh, his wife actually told me the previous day that I came up to him, that I approached him, he was actually praying that Heavenly Father would bring, bring him more. Bring somebody. Yep. And lo and behold, here I am. And uh, he gave me a Book of Mormon and he told me his story. And um, he set me up with some sister missionaries because I didn't want to just, uh, I didn't want to just join uh, because I was looking for um, a way out of my bad okay. yeah. situation. Yeah. I, I wanted to make sure I, I could join and... Uh, Really, really believe this. Really come into it. And, yeah. yeah, and so they gave me a Book of Mormon, and um, it touched me. It touched me tremendously, which is why I tell people to this very day, stay away from it. It's <laughs> poison. It will, uh, it'll be the most beautiful thing you've ever read, and it will intoxicate you to the point where you just think, how could this possibly be of the devil? Not true. Huh? Yeah, it has to so be So when you pray about it, you're going to get that warm, fuzzy feeling in? I didn't even need to pray about it. I, I read it. You just it. knew it was true. I just knew it was true. And I, I, I called the missionaries and, and uh, well, actually, um, it was during one of the discussions. I said, ladies, I want to get baptized. And so, so had they shared with you by then the Joseph Smith story mm -hmm. and the book, of, of course, the Book of Mormon, Plan of Salvation. The whole shebang. The, yep. The whole shebang. Do you sense yep. now that you look back, just because we're on the topic, that they cover, they don't cover anything questionable, do they? No. I mean, they don't bring up any issues that you might learn later about yeah. things, but they kind of keep it basic and yeah. stick to the Joseph Smith and Book of Mormon and Plan of Salvation. Yeah, they sure don't go into uh, <laughs> things you got to do later on. Yeah. Uh, they don't go into a lot of uh, the stuff you find out later on in the Doctrine and Covenants, yeah. that would make you, especially if you're raised as a Christian, yeah. uh, that would make you go, uh, say what now? Yeah. <laughs> and I can see why, is because I think a lot of people would be scared away if uh, yeah. they were up front with everything. Well, you have an interesting perspective on the Book of Mormon. I guess maybe it would be appropriate to hit that one again, because that's, um, you know, I haven't really heard it quite that way. Stay away from it, because mm -hmm. it, it is very Christian sounding, isn't it? Very much in, so. In some ways. And I was surprised and it took me years after leaving Mormonism to realize that the Book of Mormon doesn't really contain Mormonism. 
you know, the three degrees of glory and stuff about God, <coughs> families are forever and all those different things. I was yeah. surprised. Yeah. I, I had never thought about it. I just assumed it did or, well, I knew it didn't because I'd read it so many times. <laughs> sure. But, but that's fascinating. So stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, uh, you hit the nail right on the head when and you said... And you've learned more now. Oh, go ahead. I'm so, oh, no, so it's, sorry. it's fine. It's hit fine. Um, you really did hit the nail on the head. There's really not a lot in the Book of Mormon that would um, disagree with uh, Orthodox Protestant Christianity. Just a couple of lines here and there, yeah. Yeah, and uh, normally I would think if, if, if you're raised Catholic, uh, most likely you won't buy into the Book of Mormon, but my, uh, my bishop, my, the first bishop I had as a Mormon was a uh, former Catholic. Oh. And he converted, uh, I don't know when, uh, but any, the point is he was raised Catholic and he bought into it, so I guess you can. Um, but uh, that is um, actually the one thing I know Satan uses to get someone into um, the Mormon religion. Interesting. Uh, Interesting thought. Eighty-five percent, from what I from what I gather, eighty-five percent, um, and this is just the research that I've done, um, of Mormon converts have some kind of a uh, Christian background. My uh, landlady, uh, to this day, she's LDS. She was raised Lutheran. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, when you read the Book of Mormon and you're told all your life as a Christian, it's evil, um, it's of the devil. You have to step back, and uh, unless you read everything else that Joseph Smith wrote, right. would you just stick to the Book of Mormon? And you have to be like, what? What's so unchristian about this? Yeah, right. In fact, they even uh, compliment the Trinity, <laughs> and uh, they won't call it that. Yeah. The Mormons won't call it that. But um, one of the assigned readings I had in the uh, Book of Mormon, it 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 said, um, I don't remember the exact words, but the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, uh, who is one God, Amen. That's right. Well, that hello. Yeah. That sounds like everything I was raised to believe in. And so it, um, the reason I tell people to stay away from it, though, is because um, I'll, I'll use this uh, illustration. Um, in rat poison, there's 99.995% uh, good food. It's good for the rat. It's what attracts him to it, I guess, right? Exactly. Um, it tastes good. It's good for him. Um, it only contains 0 0.005 poison. No, but that's what <laughs> that's what kills the rat. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, another example, Adolf Hitler said, um, if you want someone to, um, oh no, he didn't say it like that. Um, how did he say it? He said, uh, if you tell a lie uh, long enough, often enough, and loud enough, the people will people believe it. People will believe it. He also said they're more likely to believe a uh, big lie rather than a small one. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got some good ones there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, so, but. Do you feel research. like maybe when you're saying that a lot of Christians come into Mormonism, mm -hmm. is it because they don't have a, a foundation or they, they haven't done their due diligence reading the Bible or they aren't as well grounded or what would, what would attract them then? Because now you have this Christian background, but you also have Mormon background, but now you have the new Christian background. You couldn't, you probably couldn't join Mormonism now, right? No. I mean, that would be, oh, a minute, yeah. even if you didn't know it, because you're so well versed and grounded and so on, yeah. Well, uh, in Genesis chapter 3, it says that the serpent was more uh, cunning <laughs> than um, any of the beasts of the field. That word serpent actually doesn't mean snake. In fact, uh, when you go in, through in the, the temple, Greek or, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew? Oh, language? sorry, Hebrew, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's a Septuagint, you know, yeah, and I'm just kidding. Right, okay. um, no, but in the Hebrew, um, the word serpent actually doesn't mean snake. Um, in fact, when you go through the temple and you're introduced to Satan, you, you watch a video um, mm -hmm. that takes you from the creation story uh, and explains all of kind of what you're doing right, there. Right. Well, when you're introduced to Satan, you don't see him as a snake. You don't see him as a lizard. Uh, you see him as a, a person. Right. A person. Well, um, in the Hebrew, in Genesis, the word serpent actually doesn't mean snake. It means um, one that shines, one that's um, attractive. And so um, <laughs> I think the one thing that um, attracted me more than anything, absolutely anything, was just the, uh, the beauty, um, the emotions that you would feel when reading the Book of Mormon, when you would think about going to the temple, when you would think about getting married in the temple. You would take these pre-temple classes uh, that would yeah. prepare you for going into the temple and you were just so, uh, uh, I, I don't even have the words, it was just like um, uh, the first time you ever feel your mother 
cradle you and say, the I love you. Expectation. Yeah. yeah. I love you. I'm going to protect you. You're safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like. And so um, I, I, I would say that uh, in my judgment, um, the one thing that causes a, Mor a, a Christian to enter into Mormonism is a lack of um, biblical knowledge. Uh, yeah. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 3.15 that we're supposed to uh, be prepared at all times to give an answer. And that word answer in the Greek, I got it right <laughs> that time, in the Greek is uh, apologia, and it means a defense. Yeah. Um, we need to be ready to give a defense. And um, if there's one thing I've learned over this whole experience is that emotions don't determine what's true. I, I lived with uh, four bisexual women who, uh, b <laughs> before joining the Mormon church, who rejected Mormon completely because they couldn't get their mind around the idea of a God condemning them to hell for loving someone of the same gender because their argument was, every time their argument was, well, it's not the gender I'm in love with, it's, it's the person, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, in the, oh, go ahead. No, no. Oh, okay. I thought you, wanted, thought you wanted to say something. Yeah. Um, in Proverbs 28, uh, 26, uh, in the King James Version of the Bible, it says, uh, he that trusteth his own heart is a fool. Yeah. Um, well, in the Hebrew culture, the heart was the center of um, emotion, affection. Sure. Uh, and, and in a more modern translation of the Bible, which uh, the, the English Standard Version, uh, same verse, it actually says, he that trusts his own mind is a fool. And I think they're both equally appropriate Are because tied in with each other. Yeah, because you, you can't get to the emotions without first going through yeah. the mind. I can't know how I feel about something if I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 9, uh, the heart is deceitful above all. Who can know it? <laughs> in the original Hebrew, that, that means who knows how bad it really is. Yeah. It's that sick. And so um, we just need, we need to be telling the Christians, especially here in Idaho, as Mormon populated as it is, you need to understand how truth is known, and it's not through emotions. Yeah. It's um, so. How did you actually come out then? That you and you were you went through the temple mm -hmm. and you uh, got your endowments and so on. What brought you out? My holy underwear. <laughs> uh, the underwear became uncomfortable, and I, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what happened was, I uh, was doing everything right. I was a Sunday school president. I was a ward missionary. Couldn't go on a mission, but desperately wanted to. Because you were too old. I was too old, yeah. Right. I guess the cutoff date is 26. And you were 28. I was 28. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, I was doing everything right. And, and uh, except for, uh, I, I just, I couldn't get a woman to love me. Oh. <laughs> and uh, in order to get into heaven, in order to get into the celestial kingdom, one of the requirements was you had to be sealed to a significant other in the temple. Yeah. Oh, and you and you really considered the fact that you hadn't been on a mission, and that was a that was a problem. Yeah. I don't know how many Mormon young ladies um, told me, or I heard say, "I will not marry anyone unless he's a return, a return missionary." Return missionary. And I, I I seriously just couldn't get a second date, and and I I I was always told, Sean, relax, just keep doing your best. Yeah. Just keep doing your and best. Things and, will work out. And things will work out. But I didn't even know I was doing my best. I mean. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? And that was another thing too, is that you were never guaranteed a spot in the celestial kingdom. You had to wait till after you died. And I was standing so in my really earned it. Exactly. I was standing yeah. in my kitchen one afternoon. It was actually on a Sunday. It was actually after church. I was still a Mormon and it just dawned on me. This is not what the gospel is. The word gospel means good news. Well, yeah. I'm scared all the time. I'm discouraged all the time. I don't know if I'm doing my best. I really miss the doctrine of grace. Unearned Did you favor. understand that as in Calvary Chapel? Then? No, no. Um, I don't think that was anyone's fault. I just think I just wasn't listening. Yeah, but I'm I, sure the message was there. It was, and I heard it. Yeah, and I even looked up the word grace in the LDS Bible Dictionary, and it says that it's only granted after to after the, all we can do. After all we can do. Yeah. yeah, it was only granted to those who put forth their best efforts, and that is not good news. No. That is just not good news. Um, so, did you share this with? Anybody? The bishop? I did. And yeah, what happened? My bishop, my uh, friends at work, yeah. majority of which was LDS, um, other people, um, they got very upset with me. Um, they wouldn't even let me finish my sentences um, because they knew where I was going. I was, I was defending that the, the position that Mormonism is not true based on reason. They don't want reason. No. Truth to them. And here you were a exactly. golden contact and a convert. Yep. And that's why they put you in the ward mission program, yep. of course. To them. And so you were a disappointment, I guess. Oh, absolutely. Huh? A truth is, 
to the Mormon truth is determined by feelings. If you yeah. go into logic, you're asking the wrong questions. And so they were just like, you know the truth and you are choosing to reject it. You are an apostate, you're an antichrist. Um, and you've sensed that. It was a devastating experience and unfortunately it happened several times. Mm -hmm. Just being honest. Yeah. I was just being honest and that was the result. Well, what kind of a message would you give to, I mean, it, to the LDS? I mean, you're trying to, now you know better and you understand grace and who Jesus is and they don't, but they're not willing to really look and study, are they? Uh, in my experience, no. Yeah. More so than not are not willing to uh, take the chance and investigate for themselves. Yeah. They don't trust the Bible. Nope. Don't understand the cross. Mm -hmm. the temple work is all mis is a, a miscue and everything. I would say to the Mormon, to answer your question, I would say to the Mormon, the gospel is not do, do, do. Yeah. Keep doing that, you'll have nothing but a big pile of doo-doo. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, you wanted to share a scripture. Yeah, that, that, that was actually my next point. Was Jesus okay. said in um, John 6, uh, 29, this is the work of God, that you believe on the one in whom he has sent. And he answered that question. It was a question asked to him, what is the work of God? What does God what expect of us? What is the work of God? That you believe on the one in whom he has sent. The last words Jesus ever spoke on the cross was, it is finished. In the Greek, that means to tell us I, and it means paid in yeah. full. You can't add to that. <laughs> Just trust Jesus. It's yeah. that easy. And it's so godlike. I say that, but it's it, it is simple, and it's it's godlike. It doesn't have all this other stuff that that man has added to Amen. to that uh, wonderful gift of grace. Amen. So, how long were you LDS then? Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can I can imagine having been through the temple, and yeah. then the bishop must have been <sighs> upset, and disappointed, and devastated. He was yeah. devastated. He and his wife. Yeah. Have you had any family? I guess they're they happy that you've found Christ and they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and you feel at peace now, some freedom. Do you? I'm free. Yeah. He who the Son makes free is free indeed. I'm free, <laughs> and I can't wait to see the face of my glorious Savior. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And it's the most wonderful thing. And it, it somebody else said that it's just so free, freeing to not have men in between us and <sighs> God that we have that personal relationship that, that gives us such comfort and trust. And Amen. I couldn't agree with whoever said that more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could not well, many, agree more. Many have said it, but um, I feel that same freedom. And, Amen. And uh, enjoy Christian worship. And Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Well, Sean, thanks so much for sharing your story. You're a delightful young man. Thank and, you. Uh, I appreciate your courage. Gosh, that's so terrific. And He's we'll worth see you risking everything. Yeah, that's for sure.